And now, it gives me extremely great pleasure to introduce our honoree and speaker this morning, Patty Stonecipher. Sister Pat, if you would bring Dr. Stonecipher, soon to be Dr. Stonecipher, to the center. All right. Helping children and families through direct service and advocacy to alleviate conditions of poverty are actions rooted in the ideal of social justice that animate Patty Stonecipher's life and work. One of nine children growing up in a Catholic family in Indiana, Patty learned about social justice from her parents. Her father started a food pantry on the north side of Indianapolis. Like so many Trinity students, including in this class, Patty began college, stopped out to get married and had children, and then went back to college to finish her degree. Is that a familiar story? Yes. yes. Moving to Seattle, Patty found a job with a young startup called Microsoft, doing what she thought would be her life's work, making knowledge broadly accessible. A new thing called the internet was doing just that. After moving through the ranks at Microsoft, Bill Gates asked her to become the founding president and CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where she spent 10 years shaping the world's largest philanthropy devoted to the eradication of disease and to improving education. In 2008, Patty moved to Washington and here she chose to work for social justice in direct service at Martha's Table. Martha's Table today serves 18,000 people a year with food, clothing, and educational services. I'm so pleased to say that Trinity and Martha's Table are partners in the preparation of early childhood teachers. Isn't that great? Two weeks ago, Patty announced the expansion of Martha's Table east of the river with the new Martha's Table at the Commons at Stanton Square that will open in 2018, and we hope to work with her over there as well. For her untiring commitment to service to our brothers and sisters in need, for her audacious example of leadership for social justice, Trinity is pleased to bestow upon Patricia Q. Stonecipher the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. of 2015, students, alumni, friends, faculty, and this incredible group of supporters. Let's do it one more time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am really honored to join you on such an important day. President McGuire is a personal hero of mine. I think I join you all in that, right? So are the Trinity faculty that come to Martha's table two nights a week to teach an associate's degree program for our early childhood teachers. Uh, but that brings me to the biggest heroes, the 14 teachers who finish a long day taking care of a hundred of other people's children and then continue their studies to ensure that not only can they provide for their families, but that they learn the additional information that will make them fabulous at their jobs. They are like you. Over 200 of you who have worked long days, studied long nights, and have made it to today's finish line. Here to celebrate the fruits of all that work, and I most want to thank you, the graduates, for inviting me and honoring me to participate in your celebration this afternoon. I'd like to just do one little exercise that gets to why I think Trinity is an exceptional place. Would all of you who are one of the first in your families to get a college degree, please stand and stay standing. And then all of you who had to work, and all of you who had to work to support yourself or family members while you went to school, please stand. And all of you who are involved in your community or your church while you are going to school, please stand. This is what makes reflect as beautiful as it is, it's a place where people come to build their future. And I recognize so many of you had to sacrifice a great deal 
to make it to this point. Getting here today took grit. It took believing in yourself and your education and then going for it. On the hard days, the cold days, on the days when other people and other events pulled you down, you kept moving forward. You each have shown when you set your mind to something, you can accomplish it. You've shown that you can be resilient and successful in the face of challenge, and that's the definition of grit. Wikipedia defines grit as a positive trait based on overcoming obstacles or challenges that lie in front of an individual's path to accomplishment. Overcoming obstacles that lie in front of your path to accomplishment. I see grit in Alexandra Alvarez, who balanced working part-time with a demanding biology major, but made the dean's list every single semester during her time at Trinity, and is graduating magna cum laude on her way to meeting her goal of becoming an optometrist. I see grit in Shalit Cox, who battled homelessness and illness, and is graduating today with a major in business administration. I see lots of grit in Walter Lozado, who raised his family as a single father and was seen as master of science today. Take a look to your left. Take a look to your right. We could go on with stories like these for hours because you've each shown that by getting this degree, you have grit. And that will serve you incredibly well in the years ahead. It's a hugely valuable character trait. But I have a hypothesis. I believe it takes something beyond grit to really stretch you as far as you're capable. Grit will keep you moving through the toughest times, the longest days, but audacity, audacity gets you soaring. Grit will keep you moving, audacity gets you soaring. So what exactly is audacity? It's that little bit of crazy. That crazy idea of a bold future in the face of today's reality. It's the willingness to dream big and take bold risks with your own ambitions, with your plans for your family, with your plans for your community. We need you to be audacious, to aspire not just to nursing, but to being the best nurse, the head nurse, the director of nursing. We need you to be audacious, to aspire not just to joining Martha's Table, but to running Martha's Table. We need you to take this degree and move forward to have the audacity to see yourself in future leadership, to dream the dream and make the moves to fill the gaps from where you are now to where you're dreaming you could be in 10 years. And not just where you can be, but where your family can be, your community can be, where your country can be. I have a little plaque that sits on my shelf at home that a long ago boyfriend gave me. Don't ask me why I kept it. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? That's what it says on this plaque. That's a crazy statement, right? But what would you do if you knew you could not fail? That's audacious thinking. And combined with the grit you have already shown, it's exactly what we need in our future family leaders, business leaders, nonprofit leaders, health sector leaders, and especially, oh, especially in our political leaders. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? What audacity would you show in your community leadership? In his book, The Audacity of Hope, our then-Senator Barack Hussein Obama described it this way, the hope of a skinny kid with a funny name who believes that America has a place for him too. Hope in the face of difficulty, hope in the face of uncertainty, the audacity of hope. He had the audacity to run for president in his very first term as senator, and he soared. We can look to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere should have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and freedom and dignity for their spirits. So he took that audacity and led a national nonviolent civil rights movement that engaged tens of millions and changed history. He soared. But it's not only the famous that show audacity to change our communities. Carolyn McCarthy was a local nurse when her husband was murdered in the mid-90s by a mentally ill gunman who shut up a, shot up a railroad car in New York. Her son was injured too, and her response to this tragedy was to double down on audacity. She started campaigning and testifying at gun control hearings, but then she decided things weren't moving fast enough, so she ran for Congress and won. 
and spent 18 years in Congress trying to change as many stupid laws as she could. She became known as the gun lady. She had audacity. Each of you knows someone in your community that has a little bit of crazy audacity. She's pushing for safer streets. He's pushing for the local school to improve. It's what creates change in our community. So ask yourself, what's your audacious hope for your community? What can audacity give you as a parent? I think of Ursula Burns' mother. Ursula was raised in a tough New York City public housing project by a single mother who ran a daycare in the house and ironed other people's clothes in order to support her three children and send them to Catholic school. At mom's insistence, Ursula attended college and started out at Xerox as an intern in 1980. 29 years later, Ursula became CEO of Xerox, the first African-American woman to lead a Fortune 500 company, and she is doing an amazing job. <laughs> Ursula gives the credit to her mom's audacity. She says, I can still hear her telling me that where you are is not who you are. Where you are is not who you are. The kind of climate that Ursula made took not just the grit her mom showed to ensure her kids were well-fed and well-schooled, but required the audacity to drum into her children the very idea of a bold future. You can be that audacious person in your family. And so what about audacity in your career? I'm sure you followed the tragic events in Baltimore. And I hope you've noticed Marilyn Mosby, the black female Baltimore City State's Attorney, youngest chief prosecutor of any major city in the country. Why would she think herself qualified to run for and handle such a large job and a huge responsibility? She drew her audacity from what she saw and answered that call, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? When she, Marilyn, raised by her grandfather, was just 14 years old, her closest friend and 17-year-old cousin was shot and killed in front of her house. He was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time, and this was her first tragic introduction to the justice system. But what did she do with that experience? She used the event as inspiration for bold, audacious career aspirations. Daughter and granddaughter of a policeman witness to terrible violence, now the Baltimore City Attorney, and we're glad of it. She started with grit and soared through audacity. In my own life, as, as uh, Dr. McGuire said, I've been fortunate enough to hold leadership roles, but I can tell you I didn't arrive to those with ease. It took grit and then audacity. I was the sixth of nine children. My father was a salesman. I quit college and married young, married wrong and married young. And that often goes together. And that, as a young mother without a college degree, the Indiana town I lived in didn't even have my original major. The only way to get that bachelor's degree I knew I needed was to get a degree in general studies. So my son toddled off to the university extension daycare while I worked to accumulate the credits, essentially any credits, I needed to finish. And I stand here today, yes, the founding CEO of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, yes, the senior vice president for Microsoft, but first, I was the proud recipient of a bachelor's in general study from the Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, Indiana Extension. Yeah. And today, I received an honorary doctor's degree from Trinity, right? So what would you do if you knew you could not fail? My career started with the grit of a young mother, a lot of you. I mixed in audacity to move two small children and a husband across the country to Seattle because I believe there might be a better life there, a better job there with this crazy startup called Microsoft. And it turned out I was right, and audacity began to pay off. And then I wondered, not just then, but every time there was a bold move possible, was I good enough? Was I smart enough? And I just kept repeating, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And then I did that. People always say to me, oh, but you're fearless. And I have to tell you, nothing is further from the truth. I am afraid all the time. Ask my husband. I am fearful of so many things. But here's what I figure. Why let fear hold me back? What's the worst thing that could happen from trying that thing you're afraid of and not succeeding? I failed a lot. But the good news is the math worked out. I succeeded more than I failed. And here we are today. Great got me moving, audacity got me soaring. You showed that by being here today, getting this important degree, you have grit and lots of it. So use the same courage and resolve that got you to Trinity and got you through Trinity 
that got you here to this huge day. Channel it. Embrace the idea of setting bold goals for yourself, your community, your family, and go after those goals. Show audacity. You made this important milestone. Embrace your success. But think boldly. Your grit will keep you moving. Your audacity will get you soaring. I congratulate you with all my heart on this important day. And I look forward, and I know all your supporters look forward, to watching you soar in the years ahead. Thank you very much.